Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, om swastiastu, nama budaya, salam kebajikan untuk kita semua. Selamat datang, kami ucapkan di acara, di acara webinar SketchUp, memanfaatkan plugin dan extension pada SketchUp. Perkenalkan di sini saya Farah, selaku moderator kita pada acara siang hari ini. Di sini kita akan mendengarkan pemaparan yang menarik dari dua pembicara kita yang ahli di bidangnya yakni dengan Bapak Kiki Richard Susilo Broto, selaku arsitek dan AAC Technical Manager dari PT ACA Pacific Indonesia, dan juga kita kedatangan uh, tamu langsung dari SketchUp, yakni Mr. Robert Ng, uh, as the Customer Success Manager of Architecture and Design uh, APAC from SketchUp. Halo, Mr. Roger. Halo, uh, Pak Kiki. Halo. Halo, selamat pagi. <laughs> selamat, Hi, selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Oke, okay. uh, Robert, thank you so much for joining us on this special day, and I hope uh, everyone will get a pleasant insight from uh, your uh, presentation for today. Begitupun dengan Pak Kiki. Uh, baik, tanpa menunggu lebih lama lagi, kita akan masuk ke sesi pertama saja. Uh, to Mr. Roger, the, please. Yes, hi. So I'm going to share my screen. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah. So, um, very good afternoon, everybody from Indonesia. So, my name is Roger. So, I'm the customer, customer success manager for APEC, uh, working for Trimble SketchUp. So, very, very uh, nice to, to see uh, we get so much support from the Indonesian, uh, well, from our friends in Indonesia. So, I think today, um, Park Kiki and I will be sharing um, from a different angle of, of uh, uh, you know, how you use SketchUp, right? Um, really, it's about the extensibility of SketchUp. So before we actually dive into the, uh, the extensions, you know, the detail about extensions, I'd like to give you a brief overview of uh, Trimble as a company, right? So uh, we were founded by Charlie Trimble in 1978, right? On a single product, right? Actually it's the GPS technology. So Trimble was really the, the only player in that, in that space, you know, for back then in the 1970s. And then, uh, so throughout our history, right, Trimble, you know, we, we offer different uh, technologies uh, like GPS positioning, uh, software construction uh, tools. And then uh, currently Rock Painter is our, our CEO. In fact, he has been our CEO for the past uh, two years, two to three years. So what are some of the core industries that uh, Trimble serve. We are in the architecture construction. We also sell uh, geospatial uh, hardware, like the scanning equipment, and we are also in transport. So these are some of the core industries that we serve, just to give you an idea. And then how big is our global footprint? Right? So we are, we, are, uh, we are present in more than 40 countries. Uh, we have an employee headcount of about 11,000 and we serve many customers um, uh, globally, right? So in APEC, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia. So these are, these are the uh, Japan, Korea as well. So these are all under the APEC, right? And just to give you a heads up, I'm not sure how many of you uh, are familiar with the history of SketchUp. So SketchUp was uh, released in 2000, right, by this company called Last Software, was acquired by Google in 2006, and then by Trimble in 2012. So the product has been enriched by every transition, right? And of course the team has evolved from a, one, one single product called SketchUp. And today, if you are familiar with some of the uh, tools in SketchUp, you know, it, it has many uh, tool sets, right? 
So we have grown the software after Trimble uh, bought over, right? And, and today we, we remain one of the largest uh, communities and, and user groups uh, globally. So, um, so who, what, who are we actually building the software for? Uh, it's, really, it's really for people in the AEC space, right? Um, architects, interior designs, master planners, even to people who are more on the construction uh, side, like the contractors, uh, the design build companies, and the VDC uh, construction folks, as well as uh, anybody, right? In any industry. Uh, and you'd be surprised the, the, the personas that the people who are using uh, SketchUp, right? Outside of the AEC space as well. Uh, like for example, crime scene investigation, you know, uh, even comic artists, even animation studios, where they need to create uh, 3D models or do virtual mockups, they use SketchUp. So uh, I think maybe you are quite familiar with this. So, uh, you know, whatever tool that you use, uh, some of the very common pain points, right? Across uh, people who actually use uh, 3D, mod 3D modeling software, uh, is it requires a very long uh, learning path, right? Uh, you need special training, you need to buy expensive mobile workstation. Um, some software is quite rigid. They are very powerful, but they are quite rigid. So, you know, from a design perspective, it kind of hinders the creativity as well. And it's not so ideal for visualizing, you know, uh, conceptual designs. Uh, so SketchUp is really built for accessibility. It is easy to learn. It is powerful, intuitive, and flexible, and it's really built for creativity and, you know, just a tool for quick visualization as well as uh, presentation ready. So if you look at the entire SketchUp ecosystem today, um, you can see that it's more than just SketchUp, right? If you look, if you are, if you look at, uh, for example, what we offer in SketchUp Studio, what you are getting is a lot of uh, very useful applications. And as you see, the line actually tells you the uh, construction life cycle from start to the end, right? So for example, even be before you start design, you can use pre-design to actually uh, simulate the climate information in your location. Uh, so for instance, Jakarta, you may be quite rainy, you know, in certain months, or it could be very hot, and humid in certain months. So how do we handle some of these uh, climate, right? In your, how do you rely on some of this information, weather information, and then you uh, think of what kind of shadings you want to use, you know, how you want to treat the outdoor spaces. So pre-design is a tool that uh, allows you to do that kind of research. Uh, so and I think all of you who are using SketchUp Pro, uh, and you are an active subs subscription, right? You, are, you, are, you have access to all these tools, right? So from conceptual, you know, even for 3D importing of point cloud data uh, to uh, SketchUp for iPad, uh, to uh, building performance analysis. So we have all these tools in, the, in today's SketchUp ecosystem, right? Uh, 3D Warehouse, as you know, it is a very uh, large database for, uh, you know, for designers to actually reuse some of these uh, models. And we also have, uh, as part of our collaboration with uh, Chaos, we also have V-Ray 6, uh, which is the latest version. <clears throat> if you log into your account management, you can download V-Ray 6 if you are on the Studio, SketchUp Studio bundle, right? And of course, uh, we don't really talk about, about talk a lot about layout. So lay, after you create your 3D models, you can actually put them uh, into like a documentation, right? 2D documentation using layout. And the model is linked to your 3D model. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, we have Triple Connect that connects all the construction stakeholders across uh, you know, your project teams. So the entire ecosystem, uh, SketchUp and beyond, right, that serves all the AEC professionals. So just to give you an idea, this is uh, our most comprehensive product bundle called SketchUp Studio, right? So like I explained earlier on, you're getting all these uh, applications, right? Uh, and next year, we are releasing something very special in, in the SketchUp Studio bundle, which is called the Revit to SketchUp Importer. So we, now this tool is it's not released, but it is in public beta, right? So you can actually test it out. Uh, so what it does is it allows you to import a Revit file into SketchUp, right? So, you know, Revit, if you are familiar with Revit, uh, Revit categories, after you import into SketchUp, it becomes uh, uh, SketchUp tags, which are layers actually. Uh, Revit families will become SketchUp components, right? So these are very powerful uh, uh, tools, which uh, really help our, our, our users, right? Uh, to improve their workflow, right? To do more advanced things. Uh, because we, we do understand that um, you use, many of you use many tools along the way. You don't just use one single tool, right? So we also think about interoperability between software as well. So just to give you a quick glimpse, uh, like I talk about some of the things that are inside the SketchUp Studio, right? One of the extensions, um, which is available in the extension warehouse, is uh, Scan Essentials. So, so why is Point Cloud important for the architectural and construction industry? Because it allows you to, to get a full picture of a construction site, right? It allows you to uh, capture and to import uh, as built data, which you can work on, you know, as part of maybe your BIM workflow. And 3D models are really a digital twin, right? When you talk about digital twin, 3D models is really at the, at the start, the first step, right? You need a 3D digital model. And also you can use it for, you can use Point Cloud for site monitoring, right? So for, for instance, you want to at different phases of the construction projects, you can generate and scan the space. Right, and track when the work is completed and, and where, right? So this is quite valuable insight for stakeholders because it allows them to you know, track the building progress. So I won't talk too much on this. I just want to show you a couple of quick uh, uh, screen uh, pictures, right? So with a point cloud, you can capture as built condition and then you can bring it into SketchUp. You can model along the point clouds. So when you have the three model, you can use it, right? Whether it's to present to a client, a proposal, a bid for a project, things like that. Uh, so yeah, like I mentioned earlier on, you know, uh, so Scan Essentials is the extension that you will use, right? Um, I'll just like to show you this quick video. I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see the video? I think you can, right? So, so this is a really a point cloud uh, file that's uh, imported into SketchUp, right? So with the extension called the Scan Essentials, you can actually do many things, right? You can measure the, on the S-built information in your space, right? And you can model directly on the point cloud with uh, the Scan Essential tools, right? And it's very accurate, right? Your point cloud data, right? It's sometimes accurate to the one to two millimeters even. So what do you do? You actually draw a 3D model from the point, using the point cloud data, right? And these represent the s uh, And sometimes you, you also can superimpose the point cloud uh, to view different design alternatives. You know, you, you just want to see how different buildings look like together, you know, so you can explore, right? <clears throat> just, just to explore, right? The, the existing space, the existing site condition. And as you design around, um, yeah, of course, and you can superimpose the point cloud on the, 
design model and you can check for differences right between the s built and the 3D model. <clears throat> so these are just some quick uh, uh, visuals of what you can do with the point cloud. And you can also clip the point cloud, right? Because sometimes your model is quite, your point cloud is quite big. You just want to focus on specific areas. So you can actually use some of these tools to clip, clip off the point cloud and just focus on those areas. So of course, another extension uh, is also V-Ray 6, right? This is part of our partnership with uh, Chaos. So we also offer it in the SketchUp Studio bundle, right? I'm sure many of you use V-Ray as well. So I don't have to talk too much on this. Basically, it's just to create photorealistic rendering, right? For that project. Uh, I understand some of you, you maybe you spend uh, two or three days, right? Just getting that perfect one shot. Right? You tweak the materials, the textures, and lighting. And this is really done using the V-Ray uh, extension, right? In, in the SketchUp Studio bundle. Uh, yeah, this is just one of the many features that are available with the V-Ray, which is called the V-Ray Vision. So basically what it does is every time you upload, you update a model, you, the rendering also updates at the same time, right? So I think I, I, I gave you a quick, uh, hopefully I give you a quick overview of, uh, you know, corporate overview coming from Trimble, right? Uh, I just want to go more into today's uh, main topic, right? Um, so what I'm going to do in the next five, five, uh, maybe five minutes or so, I'm going to give you, I'm um, just going to talk about, you know, extensions, right? And then after that, I'll hand it over to Akiki, right? Your favorite teacher. And then he will, he will actually show you some uh, demo, uh, uh, he picked. I think he picked up uh, quite a number of extensions that uh, he would like to show you. So, as when you think about extensions, I always think about this, your mobile phone, right? So, SketchUp is a lot like like your smartphone. Your smartphone is very simple, but at the same time, it's a very complex piece of equipment, right? You can customize it. So, how do you customize it? You can download many apps. Right from the Apple, Apple App Store or from the Google Play Store, right? So it, at the same time, it is also very diverse because uh, there are so many, so many applications right out there. Uh, people are developing apps for, you know, checking the train time, uh, maybe grab food, you call a taxi, uh, or even like you use your iPhone to to do a to scan the space, right? To get a point cloud. So every time I think of extensions, I think of it like, like SketchUp is a smartphone, right? And really, I, I want to, today's topic is really talking about the extensibility of SketchUp, right? Extensible to supercharge your workflows. So with SketchUp by alone, I'm sure all of you are quite familiar what it can do uh, and some of the limitations. But with the power of extensions, you can really bring it up to the next level, right? So what are extensions? Extensions are basically scripts, small programs like apps. You know, that's why I gave the analogy like smartphone with the apps, right? To install in SketchUp, to expand its functionality, right? To make your modeling more faster and more efficient. So how many extensions are there today? There are a lot. Right. Uh, there are more than 900 plus extensions. Some of them are free. Some of them are, you need to pay a little, a little bit of money, right? Some cost $5, some $15, some $50, you know. Uh, most of them are less than $80, I think. Uh, and where can you find those extensions? You can find those extensions in the extension warehouse. Uh, I think later Park Kiki will show you. Like I think he has, uh, he will show you where you can download extensions. Uh, you can also download extension from this place called a Schedulecation, right? It is uh, you open up your your 
you can go to the internet and key schedulecation. You can download some extension from there. Some of them are free. Or you can download extension from the individual product website. That means maybe I'm a developer, I develop extension, and then you can just come to my website and buy the extension, right? And then you download the Ruby file and you install it into SketchUp, right? So just a, just a very quick one. So this, this extension called Component Spray. So many a times you want to put people in, right? In your scenes. And you just have to insert one by one. So what this does is, what if you have a terrain and you have 1,000 people and you want to scatter them throughout the terrain, right? The terrain is not flat. It has a topo, topography. So within uh, less than 20 seconds, you can use component spray and you can send all these people, right? Standing on the terrain. So I hope this gives you a quick overview of what uh, some of the extensions. And of course, extensions, like I said, is very powerful in SketchUp. And there are hundreds, 900 plus extensions. Of course, you don't use all. Uh, usually you use maybe about 10 to 15. All right, try to master them and integrate it into your workflow and you are very good, right? This picture is just exaggerated, right? Uh, you never want to do that on your... <laughs> In your SketchUp, right? But it just goes to show you that so many different uh, extensions. And I just want to show you a few, right? You have very simple ones, like your, you know, your half copy, your selection toys, one of my favorite tools, Solid Inspector, uh, Drop GC, uh, your Anarov. And then you have more complex ones, like for example, the Kerbalov that you can you do a low sweep. Uh, one of my favorites is actually the soap skin bubble for landscape uh, architecture to create a uh, topography. Uh, extrude tools, uh, Fredo, Fredo 6 tools, uh, so on and so forth, right? And then of course you have, there are some that are more for, uh, more for architects, right? So this one is one of my favorite uh, flex tools. I met up with the developer. He's from Israel, actually. Very nice guy. His name is Yoni. Uh, and then what he does is, you see, sometimes we have to draw the windows, right? From scratch, right? But his extension called Flex Tools. I think it costs about $100 per year. You can cut the wall opening, right? Uh, so even you have like a plaster on your wall, you can, you can cut. And, you, and it's basically dynamic components, right? Uh, and you can open and close the windows as well, right? If you don't want the size, you can always change it. And just by click, 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 you can change the different option. You can open the window, you can close the window just by clicking, right? You don't have to select anything. So you can check it out. Flex tool is quite interesting for architecture. And then, uh, of course, we have uh, for site. Site design, right? We have this thing called a uh, pacemaker, right? So you know, at location in SketchUp, you import a uh, a map, right? A map, let's say a map of downtown Jakarta into SketchUp, right? And then you try to draw buildings. So, but if you are if you are, you have a very big uh area, uh, it's very troublesome to draw one by one, right? The house. So what placemaker does is you, this one costs a bit of money, I think. You have to buy the cloud credits. But this one, what it does is it allows you to import high, high resolution uh, terrain uh, images, pictures. And then just by clicking on, on those tiles, you can import the 3D model, the terrain and all the models, and you create the models for you automatically. And then uh, I hope you get the idea from the picture. And then we have things like uh, Popo Shaper, another one of my favorites, right? So some of you, if you are looking at uh, terrain, right? So maybe somebody give you uh, some point cloud, right? <clears throat> it's, it's point cloud, just point, points, X, Y, Z points, right? In space. How do you bring this to become a topology, right? 
Uh, and then with the topology, you can actually design, right? Whatever you want to design on top of the topology, right? So uh, there's this extension called Topo Shaper. Uh, please check it out. I think it's in Scheduleation. It costs about $15, one five, right? For three licenses, I think, uh, forever permanent license, $15. Uh, so it's very useful. I like um, how it creates the, the terrain. Right? And then of course, like I mentioned earlier on, um, there are also many uh, applications or extensions, right? Uh, for rendering like uh, V-Ray is what we have, but I think there are many others as well. And of course, just to show you one from our friends in Thailand, recently we had a beast camp there. Uh, so what this guy does, you know, when they design houses in Thailand, they like to draw the structure, the concrete structure first, right? So my friend from this uh, SketchUp home, he developed an extension, right? Uh, to very quickly draw uh, the, the concrete column, the, the concrete footing, column, beam, and slab. And you just need to click, 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 and then you will snap, snap, snap. Right? You don't have to draw the rectangle and then push pull and then make a component and then move copy. You just you can just click, right? And I can show you how powerful this is. I'm going to delete everything away and draw from scratch the footing, right? And you can see I draw the column and then it will automatically draw. It will automatically, literally automatically draw the column as well and the slab, right? And you can do this for 20 seconds. So that's amazing, right? So I think I, I passed my time today. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Park Kiki for giving me the opportunity to uh, address our friends uh, in Indonesia. Uh, and I'm just going to hand, hand my time uh, over to Park Kiki, right? So thank you, thank you all so much for giving me the chance to talk to you. So, Hakiki, over to you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Roger. Uh, maybe uh, before continue to my presentation, we can answer the questions that asked to you, Mr. Roger, before continue to my presentation. Because in case you have another schedule in last minute. <laughs> so, uh, maybe this is... Okay, I can stick from, around for another half an hour. Yeah. 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 There's a question from Denny Rizky, Prisma Kartika. Uh, maybe you can... Uh, okay. Permission to ask Mr. Roger according to your explanation regarding the advantage of SketchUp. Of course, it is inseparable from various challenges. For example, from an economic point of view, etc., how can SketchUp ensure that the features provided are always competitive when compared to solutions from similar competitors? As well as for the education sector, is SketchUp available in the student version? Oh, it's panjang juga nih pertanyaan. <laughs> it's a, a long question, Mr. Robert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Maybe> you can. <laughs> okay, maybe you can answer. Yeah. I'm not sure if I caught the question correctly, but I think it's quite a detailed question and thanks for asking that. I, uh, I think for the education-wise, uh, Trimble has this Trimble uh, collaboration with universities, right? Where they, where they, um, they work with the universities to establish what they call the Trimble Learning Lab, TLL, right? And then they, um, so, so they, they collaborate with the universities to, to offer not just SketchUp, but all the Trimble software, right? Or hardware, like the scanners. But I think your question is more on the education license, right? Or SketchUp. So I think Trimble will, will continue to offer education license. And if you, if you, if you look at uh, the education license today, right? For the studio for education, it includes Safira, right? But for the commercial one, it does not include. <clears throat> so it goes to show how, how we are investing in this, right? We are basically 
allowing the students to actually use this at a very low price point, right? Uh, just to just because we know that education is very important. Uh, so from the economic point of view, if you look at SketchUp today, relative to other competitor software, right? You are getting a lot. Uh, just now I show you the SketchUp Studio, right? You are getting a lot of different uh, applications like V-Ray, uh, Scan Essential, Trimble Connect, uh, Pre-Design, Layout. So you are getting a lot, right, for just more besides SketchUp Pro, right? So I would always like to say like it's high value, low cost, right? And the reason why we are quite successful in some of the emerging countries, right, is because people just don't really want or they cannot, um, how should I say, it's, it's, they, they just can't, can't risk it's a kind of risk, right? Management in terms of cost, right? Uh, so they they are so they are using SketchUp to do a lot of their work, right? Uh, and it's the same in, in my country as well, right? Um, people are always struggling with uh, that they are using too many tools, right? They are using SketchUp, they are using Rhino, they are using ArchiCAD, they are using uh, V-Ray, they are using Lumion, they are using Enscape. So I wouldn't say that we are trying to replace them. But SketchUp, as you know, is quite an open software, right? When we were at Google, we were kind of open source. So when you look at extensions, you, you can see where we are going, right? We are leveraging on uh, a lot of developers. Uh, and, and the sky is the limit, actually, right? So with, with the right extension, uh, you can do a lot of amazing things, right? That you can only do in other, using very advanced software, right? So I would say that, SketchUp has high value uh, at a quite a affordable cost. If you look at it from an economic perspective, uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah. Does that answer the question? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, uh, maybe two, two more questions we can try. Yeah. From Mr. Anwar Nukraha. When companies want to use SketchUp, what parameters need to be considered best practice like what? In addition, if you from the economic side, some far use of these solutions in order to reduce costs when compared to other similar solutions can be explained. Okay, when companies want to use SketchUp, what parameters need to be considered best practice? I think... Um, I guess if you look at it from, you can look at this from different angle, right? If you look at it from <clears throat> what do your graduates who join the design company when they come out from school, what kind of skill set do they have? A lot of them, they, they do use SketchUp in school, right? Because it's very easy. So when they are out of school, they already know some of this software. So that's a very good something that's very good because you don't have to spend time to train, right? So when you talk about best practice, I mean, SketchUp is what we call the direct modeling software. Direct modeling. If you look at, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if some of you, um, I previously, I, I use a lot of different CAD software as well, right? Uh, even more in those in the engineering, like SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, Creo, Parametric, uh, uh, so it is, it is parametric design. That means there's a more parent and child relationship. But SketchUp is not. SketchUp is direct modeling, right? So you're not constrained by the parent and child relationship. Uh, so if viewed from the economic side, so far, use of this solution in order to reduce cost when compared to other similar solutions. I don't really un, uh, understand this, but as, as I explained earlier on, right, if you look at the what you are getting for that that uh, for that price point, right, you are getting a lot of things for. If you look at SketchUp Pro today, it's just, I think it's just, uh, about. How do I say? Three to four hundred US dollars, right? 
and if you compare some of the our competitors, you know, in terms of uh, cost and what they offer, right? You can see that there's a quite a big gap, right? Uh, so I'm not sure if that answers the question, but hopefully it did. Uh, so somebody in the group asked, I think it was Danny, right? Risky or Danny. Does it, re regarding the extensibility provided by SketchUp, does it require an additional license to use? No, it, if you have SketchUp Pro subscription, you can install the extension, right? Uh, but you do have to take note. Uh, it, it is not included in the purchase of a Pro, but you can go to extension warehouse, right? Extension warehouse. Uh, and just, let me see if I can show you this. You can just type extension sketchup.com, right? You can still see my screen, right? Can you see yeah. my screen? Yes, 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 yes. Can you see extension warehouse? Yes. Okay. So you just go to extension.sketchup.com and you can see all these extension, right? Some of it is free. Like this cleanup is quite useful. And these are the people who are developing the extension, right? Tom Tom, he works for Trimble. Uh, SketchUp for you, he's from Thailand. Chiri, I think he's based in Vietnam. Anna Roth, also my colleague from Trimble. And then Chris is also from Trimble. He was around since the Google, Google Times, right? So these are some developers. Why do we call it top? Because top download, right? The most number of downloads. But of course, there are so many other developers, right? So you can select from different categories, right? Import, export, landscape architecture, rendering, woodworking, reporting, productivity, interior design, even filming and stage, drawing tools, architecture, 3D printing. So these are all the categories for extensions, right? Uh, so I don't know, I hope that answers uh, the question. So you don't need additional license, but uh, you do need to download it to install it, which I think Pakiki can show you. So for the Topo Shaper plugin, is it only available in the latest version? I would say the answer is no. So let's say if you are on SketchUp 2021 or SketchUp 2020, you can download the Topo Shaper, right? Uh, but you do take note some extensions, right? They don't work on the latest version because they are still catching up. So maybe when you go to the extension page, you have to take a look. Oh, this extension is only available for SketchUp 2021 or 2020, right? Uh, I think, have, let me see if I can skim through some of this. Wow, a lot of questions, huh? <laughs> That's good. Cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. For the use of function uh, that is it possible to open up in the old SketchUp? I say this one is a common problem, right? Across CAD system. So I think the answer is no. Uh, this one, the pricing, I think I let the marketing uh, answer. <laughs> Maybe we can, we can save S first into the old version, yeah? Save S to the old version. Sorry. Yeah, uh, for uh, opening latest version of SketchUp, maybe we can save as to old version first. Yeah. But not all the function uh, can work, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Any other oh. question? Yeah, okay, uh, Mr. Roger. Uh, uh, there are still many other questions but uh, if we see the question maybe it seems we should answer them after the next presentation maybe yeah 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 because I think another some them, yeah yeah some yeah. of them you can get mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the commercial people to actually answer it yeah, yeah. okay but pro licenses catch up pro license for education is a bit uh i'll say it's 90 percent the same yeah. right Except yeah. that it includes Safira. 
for higher education for university, right? Yeah. So how do you upgrade the SketchUp Pro to the latest version? I think you just log into the account management portal and download the installer, right? Okay, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, yeah, what are some of the common more. problems that are experienced in interior design? I think some of the common problems is when you import a DWG drawing into SketchUp, right? And you have to clean up before you pull, pull, push, pull the wall, right? So there are some extensions like, for example, the cleanup tools, the Enerol face creator extension that you can use, right? Yes. Uh, you can Google uh, YouTube, you can find a lot of videos on that. Right? Yeah. Okay. Or you can reach out to Park Kiki and he can yeah. explain to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you can see our YouTube channel for uh, what what is Crimble Connect, what is SketchUp World Web. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I kind of answered most of the. Uh, oh, one more. Why is SketchUp Go different from. SketchUp for web, right? Yeah. So SketchUp Go is SketchUp for iPad. SketchUp for iPad, right? Uh, and SketchUp for iPad, yeah. SketchUp for web. So SketchUp for web right, is something very, is, that's very, uh, uh, very simple, right? If you go to, let me see if I can. Am I taking up too much of your time, Akiki? Let me know. Uh. No, uh, no worry, no worry. <laughs> so, <clears throat> when you buy, I think the best way to explain this, right, is to show you, uh, let me see, uh, all product. Before that, I open up. In fact, you can come here, right? Compare all features. Sorry, it's a bit... Uh, this is SketchUp for web, right? So it's just... You can model using your web browser. And every time you save, it's saved to Trimble Connect. Right? So this is SketchUp for web. So when you buy SketchUp Pro, right? Uh, Minimize this first. So you notice that you notice that when I go yeah. to SketchUp or web, right? Um, basically, what it does is it open up a file from Trimble Connect, and the UI is a little bit different, right? The UI for for SketchUp for web. It's just a basic functionality, right? Like push, pull, move, draw rectangle, line, pin bucket, uh, and then search 3D warehouse, you can do that. But if you compare the SketchUp Pro, right, on your, on your computer, it's more, more function. So I'll say SketchUp for web maybe have 30 to 40% of the function in SketchUp Pro, right? Yeah, but cannot add extension, yeah, do you agree? Yeah, that's the main thing. You cannot okay. install extension. So it's a web, you see, it's, I, I, I use it on my web browser. Right? Well, uh, can it be rendered uh, from web? To be rendering? rendering? Rendering, no, yeah. but you can add no, yeah? material. Can add material. Yeah. So, uh, what else? Okay. Uh, maybe one one question. It is uh, important, uh, Roger, from Alat Uji SNI ASEP. I am interesting to learn and make an extension plugin. I think you go to developer. Let's see what I'm typing. Sketchup.com. Uh, 
here you, you go to sketchup.com right and then you look under developers so for example sketchup ruby ruby api sketchup sdk developer forum and developer center so you should go and explore this section because it will connect you to the uh, like oh, people like TomTom okay. Tom, or our existing oh. developers right? in a community and you connect to extension warehouse yeah yeah you, you oh. have to develop the application right and test it yes. before you can upload right before you go live right so it's just like apple don't allow uh apple will filter right through those uh, apps before they release it to the apple app store right in terms yeah, of security yeah, yeah. you know security in terms of whether the app works well so there's some process right so I think more information, you can visit this developer center, quite useful. It will give you a lot of information, right? Like for example, uh, I have not really explored this, but like, you know, our UI style guide, you know, some of the Ruby scripting documentation, right? Uh, like the, the API and how to publish your extension with the world, right? Not just Indonesia, but when you publish it, everybody around the world can, can use your extension, right? So do check this out, right? Uh, yeah, so I think that's all from me today. I will stop okay. sharing. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, Roger. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining our webinars and become our Connect keynote speaker. So hopefully what is presented can be useful for us SketchUp users, especially to help in design work. Yeah. Okay. And thank you introducing you to SketchUp users in Indonesia. Maybe sometime you can meet us, SketchUp users yes. in Indonesia. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I met up with, uh, I visited last uh, uh, few months ago, right? Few months ago, yeah. Uh, and then I met uh, Park Kitty in Bangkok for our SketchUp uh, uh, SketchUp Biscamp. 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 Yeah. Uh, it's quite a and it's quite a fun event we mm. catch up with many people from the Asia community, Pacific. community yeah. in Indonesia like you know uh, Risky yeah. uh, Atanto uh, a, a lot right like <laughs> people from yeah, yeah. Your, some of your resellers right yeah. Vivian Jody. So I mean, I would like to visit and I I, I I'm very happy that uh, we have so many SketchUp supporters in Indonesia. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So Singapore is always your friend, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I hope we can have a very good relationship. Mm. So I want to thank all of you for your support on behalf of Timber. Right. And also to our distributor ACA Pacific for their help yeah. in uh, taking care of all of you, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank okay, you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Selanjutnya, Pak Kiki akan... Okay. Giliran saya. Ya, baik. Sekali lagi, terima kasih sudah bergabung di webinar kami. Uh, saya rasa udah nggak mau kau usah memperkenalkan saya ya, udah bosan <laughs> sama saya. <laughs> Panggilan saya Kiki sebagai IAC Technical di Asia Pacific. Uh, saya langsung aja. Uh, jadi tadi oleh Mr. Roger sudah disebut bahwa SketchUp itu bisa kita andaikan seperti mobile, seperti mobile phone. Seperti mobile phone, lalu kita bisa menambahkan aplikasi-aplikasi. Karena kalau sketchupnya aja mungkin itu fitur basic ya. Ya memang sengaja karena sketchup ini kan dipakai untuk uh, banyak kalangan disiplin ya dari interior, uh, arsitek, struktur, bahkan sampai ke dunia media entertainment ya desain produk semua menggunakan sketchup. Bayangkan kalau tombol arsitek lengkap semua di situ kasihan yang desain produk ya nanti nggak nyaman. Sebaliknya kalau di situ tombol-tombol mungkin untuk media entertainment, kasihan yang arsitek, banyak tombol sekali tapi yang tombol saya nggak ada. Tapi kalau semuanya dituangkan situ, eh, bayangin berapa beratnya itu sketchup ya, dan tombolnya jadi banyak banget. 
Makanya sengaja dibikin basicnya. Tapi basic pun sebenarnya sudah banyak memenuhi kebutuhan kita ya seperti uh, untuk interior uh, kita bisa menggunakan match foto, mengambil foto existing dari interiornya banyak sekali. Fashion dan lain-lain ya sampai ke pre-design yang bisa mengecek iklim. Nah tentu ada beberapa disiplin atau kebutuhan anda yang mungkin dirasa kurang. Nah, inilah extension atau plug in disediakan di sini. Ya ada ribuan dari ribuan plug in yang bisa kita manfaatkan. Ya, jadi di sini seperti kita lihat tadi sudah disebut Roger ada banyak oleh Mr. Roger sudah disebut banyak sekali fitur yang kita bisa manfaatkan. Itu baru basicnya SketchUp ya yang sudah bawaannya SketchUp. Nah dari layout dan lain-lain, mesh foto dan lain-lain. Nah kita bisa nambahkan sebentar ya. Nah. Kita bisa menambahkan beberapa plugin tadi. Ya. Nah, bagaimana cara mendownloadnya? Itu ada beberapa cara. Bisa lewat extension warehouse. Jadi dari tombol window, tombol window nanti, eh sorry, dari tombol extension, sorry, tombol extension. Kalau versi lama window ya, versi lama. Kalau versi sekarang di extension. Yang versi sampai 2020 mungkin di menu window. Tapi sejak versi 2021, 22 itu di menu extension. Extension lalu nanti ada extension warehouse dan anda bisa pilih. Jadi selain dari warehouse juga ada dari webline misalkan sketch education ya banyak ya. Nah jadi cara menginstal extension nanti lewat manage lalu install extension begitu. Nah seperti ini saya tunjukkan aja. Jadi dari menu extension sebentar ini saya iya. Jadi dari menu extension Ya, dari menu extension ini, nanti kita tinggal pilih extension yang mana yang kita butuhkan, atau berdasar kategori yang tepat dengan Anda, bisa juga diketik, ya misalkan animation, atau arsitektur, interior, dan di sini sudah banyak ditawarkan, apakah uh, mau yang, contohnya inilah salah satu, salah satu kita pilih ya, misalkan itu. Nah, lalu nanti kita tinggal install di situ. Ada menu install. Kita tinggal klik install dan dia akan menginstall secara otomatis ya, langsung terinstall dan tombolnya sudah muncul di situ, ya. Atau kalau belum muncul Anda bisa lihat di manager, extension manager dan kita lihat kita bisa install. Ini kalau yang enggak otomatis terinstall ya. Ini bisa install lalu dicari mana yang formatnya RB set ya, open dan itu sudah langsung terpasang di sana ya tombolnya sudah ada dan kalau kita lihat di menu sudah muncul atau kalau kita klik kanan lalu kita cari tombolnya di situ sudah ada ya kita tinggal rapikan apa aja extension yang kita pakai ya nah seperti ini ya jadi mudah sekali ya mudah sekali dan biasanya nggak besar, maka itu e, instalasinya juga nggak lama. Ya. Nah ini contoh e, cara menginstalnya. Nah saya langsung mulai contoh pertama yaitu profile builder ini dari Mindset Studio. Memang ini berbayar kalau yang ini ya dari Mindset Studio. Ya. E, kami Asia Pacific juga e, menyediakan ini. Jadi ini untuk membuat bentuk profil atau assembly seperti ini atau membuat dinding yang komposit atau bentuk railing dan lain-lain ya. Contoh aja ini. Sederhananya aja dari profil e, seperti ini ada pad dan ada profil. Kita bisa ambil profilnya lalu ya kita ambil profil ini dan kita record sebagai nama profilnya apa. Lalu tempatkan base pointnya di mana atau penempatannya dan kita bisa langsung tarik. Ya kalau di sini masih seperti volume biasa ya nanti anda bisa lihat yang lebih canggih lagi dari ini ya atau berdasar pad ya masih mirip volume memang kalau yang ini. Ya. Tapi ini bisa multi profil lebih dari satu profil sekaligus ya. Nah seperti ini ya oke e, contoh lain. Anda bisa buka katalog yang sudah disediakan atau bikin sendiri. Ini contoh yang sudah disediakan, yang sudah ada bonusnya ya library yang sudah disediakan ya. 
bikin sendiri yang tadi yang tadi saya contohkan di situ yang bikin sendiri kau ini yang library yang sudah disediakan. Ini contoh kalau kita membuat seperti talang air misalkan atau saluran air atau misalkan rel kereta atau bentuk profil railing. Nah ini udah langsung jadi ya. Uh, mungkin saya akan beri contoh lagi. Ini yang assembly masih di profile builder masih di fitur profile builder. Ini kalau bukan uh, profil tapi berupa assembly. Contoh saya mau memasang bendera berderet, dia sudah langsung mengatur jarak sesuai jarak yang kita tentukan. Atau di sepanjang pet, ya jalan raya itu dan kita bisa mengatur jarak jaraknya di situ, ya. kita bisa atur lagi jaraknya berapa, ya. Nah ini contoh dari uh, profile builder. Oke, okay. contoh lagi, saya akan membuat dinding komposit yang ada plesteran, bata, plesteran. Nah, ini dari profil tadi, jadi multi profil nih langsung digabung di sana, ya. Dan ini sudah langsung kita bisa membuat dinding yang komposit tadi. Nah, ya, jadi sudah ada susunan plesterannya, batanya, eh, atau membuat bentuk yang lain, komposit yang lain, ya. Atau ditambahkan komponen. Ya. Jadi di sini contoh membuat langsung dengan balok dan pondasinya misalkan. Di sini saya bikin memang sederhana sekali ya. Sengaja saya bikin yang sederhana aja. Nah itu. Ya jadi eh, langsung. Ya. Nah susunannya sudah langsung jadi. Iya, ini contoh memanfaatkan profile builder. Di sini contohnya untuk membuat dinding komposit, misalkan. Contoh lagi, di sini mengambil dari katalog library, ya, dan bisa bikin sendiri nanti ya, bisa disusun sendiri. Nah, contoh misalkan railing misalnya. Ya, ini railing, assembly dari railing. Setelah kita atur posisi dan lain-lain, kita bisa tinggal langsung tarik dan Jaraknya akan langsung teratur ya. sesuai dengan yang kita tentukan jaraknya. Ya. Contoh lagi mungkin seperti ini ya kursi eh, kursi stadion misalkan tinggal tarik miring dan ini dia udah langsung ngikuti kemiringannya pun udah langsung nyambung sudah langsung sambung di sana. Ya. Nah ini profile builder. Ya. Contoh lagi, misalkan yang kita simpan, koleksi yang kita simpan, misalkan rel kereta. Ya, ya, rel kereta, misalkan tinggal tarik, sudah langsung menyesuaikan jarak bantalan kereta, posisi relnya, juga batu-batuannya, dan jarak rel bantalannya juga bisa kita atur. Jaraknya. Dan ini contoh kalau... Enggak sebidang, misalkan menggunakan kurva tapi enggak sebidang, jadi enggak datar. Ya, misalkan naik turun, cukup sekali klik, dia sudah langsung eh, jadi juga. Ya, oke, ini naik turun itu. Ya. Atau misalkan kita bikin sendiri, misalkan eh, contoh lain, eh, sebentar ini contoh kalau kita mengatur jarak bantalannya, misalkan jarak komponen yang kita susun di sana. Ya. Misalkan saya kotak katik itu, ya. saya rubah-rubah ya, 200, 300 dan seterusnya. Dan ini akan ikut berubah, ya, langsung mengatur sendiri di sana, ya, tanpa eh, tanpa merusak komponennya, ya. Atau ini contoh yang saya bikin sendiri, ini contoh, ya, jalan layang misalkan. Nah, dengan saya susun antara Profil jalan raya, lalu tepinya, ya, lalu bawahnya itu, ya, file-filenya itu, nanti ada langsung. Dan ini juga contoh untuk yang nggak sebidang dari yang kita bikin sendiri tadi juga bisa eh, langsung. Ya, tinggal sekali klik, nah udah langsung. Ya, nah ini contoh profil builder. Ya, ini sangat membantu kita, ya. Terutama untuk yang assembly seperti ini, ya. Baik. Nah, ini contoh lagi. Misalkan untuk membuat tangga tadi, jadi nggak sebidang nih ya, nggak sebidang. Saya bikin railing, 
misalkan ngambil railing yang ini ya. sekali lagi ini bisa dibikin sendiri dengan mudah ya nggak harus terpaku dengan katalog yang ada ya kita bisa bikin sendiri tinggal ngatur jarak-jarak aja iya nah. ya jadi eh, pekerjaan kita jadi nggak terbuang waktu hanya untuk menggambar ya. tapi lebih fokus ke desain ya dibanding kita waktunya habis untuk menggambar dengan dipercepat oleh bantuan ini sehingga kita lebih fokus waktu kita ke mendesain ya untuk melakukan desain ya dan ini juga dari mindset studio yaitu placemaker ini untuk topografi ya untuk tata kota desain tata kota misalkan jadi di sini bisa mengambil sebuah maps kita ambil mapsnya dan dia bisa membaca di mana bangunannya kalau ada data bangunan tapi kalau nggak ada data bangunan kita bisa mem, e, membuat sendiri dan dan dipasang random di sana nanti ya kalau ini contoh yang memang sudah ada data bangunan dan kita bisa mengambil jalan rayanya dia membaca dari mapsnya di mana jalan raya ya. jadi ada artificial intelligence juga di dalam situ di mana letak sungai danau air jalan raya pohon ya. langsung dia bentuk 3D-nya ini place maker Ya, untuk membuat studi kawasan misalkan. Nah ini contoh kalau ada datanya tadi kita bisa membandingkan dengan foto aslinya. Ya. Kalau kita putar orbit di fotonya juga ikut berputar. Jadi kita bisa melihat kalau view ke sana seperti apa, view ke sini seperti apa, ya view ke arah bangunan yang mana seperti apa. Nah kita bisa langsung lihat dalam bentuk uh, image-nya, image fotonya. Juga ada dari Mindset Studio, masih Mindset Studio, yaitu Quantifier Pro untuk menghitung area, volume, panjang. Kita bisa menginput beratnya, juga sampai bantuan untuk menghitung biaya. Ya, jadi di sini, contoh, ya kita bisa ngambil sebuah e, bentuk bangunan sederhana misalkan. Ya. Nah, di sini kita bisa atur semua input, harga satuan, dan lain-lain. Nanti dia akan menghitung berdasar volume dan kita bisa ekspor langsung ke Excel ya kita bisa ekspor ke Excel ini quantifier pro jadi kalau anda mau pakai SketchUp untuk keperluan dunia BAM nah, ini bisa dibantu dengan quantifier pro ini ya baik nah untuk yang di bidang mechanical engineering ya mechanical electrical plumbing MEP ada lagi dari Triskeng namanya ini plugin untuk membuat mechanical, membuat plumbing juga untuk profil baja juga ada di sini ya, baja. Di sini kita bisa tinggal ambil katalognya dan kita tinggal tarik pipanya, elbownya langsung muncul juga untuk ducting AC misalkan, APAC kita tinggal atur radiusnya, panjangnya ya. dan bisa membuat tag otomatis ya tag tagging otomatis langsung langsung muncul tagnya ya bisa dirapikan juga nanti ya tergantung pengaturan nah bahkan bisa kita buat BOQ ya untuk bill of quantity-nya kita bisa munculkan yang bisa di ekspor juga ke Excel ya jadi di sini bisa langsung diekspor ke Excel Ya, nah ini dari Triskeng tadi ya. Oke, okay. kalau anda butuh Mindset Studio dan Triskeng nanti tinggal hubungi kami. Ya. Nah ini Solid Inspector ini sederhana sekali, sederhana sekali kelihatannya. Ini gratis, gratis ya free. Tapi ini penting untuk mengecek apakah benda sudah solid atau belum. Jadi begini, Edge, maaf. Jadi begini. Uh, kalau kita membuat sebuah benda, itu kan sebenarnya belum solid ya. Di SketchUp, walaupun sudah 3D, tapi sebenarnya belum solid. Dia jadi solid kalau kita sudah jadikan grup atau komponen. Nah, itu baru jadi solid. Jadi kalau belum jadi grup atau komponen, kita harus menganggapnya seperti kotak kardus yang kosong gitu. Kosong dalamnya nggak ada volume. Nah, seperti ini. Kalau kita klik ada volume, berarti dia sudah solid. Tapi yang ini, volumenya kosong. Berarti dia belum solid ini, masih kosong. Itu akan masalah kalau kita melakukan solid editing seperti misalkan kalau kita mau subtract, misalkan subtract, ya subtract, 
gagal, nggak berhasil. Ya, karena yang satu bukan solid. Nah, caranya kita cek pakai solid inspector di mana kesalahannya. Nah, ya kita klik coba kalau yang benda pertama tadi yang sudah solid seperti apa? Kalau kita klik di situ nggak ada kesalahan, ya nggak ada kesalahan karena memang sudah solid. Nah, yang ini tapi yang ini itu ada, nah ada kesalahan di sana muncul. Ada stray edge stray itu uh, ada apa ya yang nggak nyambung gitu garis yang nggak nyambung. Nah ditandain merah tanda merah. Kita tinggal fix atau fix all kalau lebih dari satu ya. Fix hilang udah no error. Sekarang volumenya sudah muncul. Nah diklik volumenya sudah muncul berarti shirt sudah berhasil jadi solid. Dan kalau kita lakukan solid editing ini sudah bisa sekarang. Ya ini gratis ya free. Ya, kelihatannya sederhana tapi ini akan sangat membantu nanti. Ya. Oke, itu yang kalau sering gagal kalau kita subtrack dan lain-lain. Lalu berikutnya extrusion tool ini sangat menarik sekali. Ya, jadi dari bentuk surface, dari bentuk vertex begini nanti kita bisa jadikan misalkan untuk membuat curtain wall, misalkan. Ya, nah ini contoh dari beberapa kurva ini dari empat kurva yang menutup. Kita bisa pilih tepinya mana saja, dan dia bisa langsung menjadikan surface. Ya, apakah mau jadi quad atau tetap triangle segitiga segitiga atau empat, dan ini udah langsung jadi sebuah surface. Contoh, contoh kalau kita membuat atap tradisional, misalkan di sini membuat sebuah atap tradisional, misalnya ya, ya, apakah mau dibalik? Ya, apakah mau quad empat segi empat? Ya, ya. Kita lakukan sekali lagi untuk yang sampingnya. Ya, sudah jadi. Ya, atapnya sudah jadi. Kita bisa haluskan juga menggunakan soften edge. Ya, kita bisa haluskan. Ya, atau tepinya ada juga fitur untuk extrude edge. Jadi dari edge itu langsung dibikin extrusion. Ya, nah, seperti itu. Nah, kita bisa tebalkan lagi dengan follow eh volumenya apa push pull ya. ya jadi ini eh, sangat membantu juga untuk diputar langsung ya bedanya dengan volume kalau volume kita harus bikin lingkaran kalau ini nggak perlu ini bisa langsung diputar ya oke okay. bisa langsung diputar misalkan seperti ini ya iya kita bisa haluskan langsung nah udah langsung jadi ya lebih cepat dibanding volume ya Oke, okay. saya akan beri contoh lain untuk masih fitur extrusion terus. Jadi ada sebuah profil, profilnya nggak harus kotak, ya terserah bikin bentuk profilnya seperti apa. Ini saya akan membuat sebuah kerangka, misalkan uh, apa curtain wall. Nah, begitu kita klik Oke, okay, profil tadi langsung membentuk ini tadi. Ya, nah ini extrusion tools. Ya, jaraknya bisa kita atur ya. Oke. Nah, contoh. Masih contoh di extrusion tools, misalkan kita mau membuat sebuah dom, sebuah kubah. Dom. Ya, ini contoh yang bisa kita lakukan. Ya. ya. Nah, ini langsung membentuk uh, seperti curtain wall nanti. Nah, kita bisa atur uh, ukuran profil dari Mulianya, ya. materialnya apa bisa kita pilih? Ya. Panel dari uh, material dari panelnya apa? Ya, apakah kurva aslinya mau dihapus? Tinggal kita putar aja sambil copy. Ya udah jadi ya, langsung jadi tutup nasi. Ya. Oke, okay. uh... Saya maju ke extension berikutnya shape bender ya kalau bikin datar gini kan gampang ya tinggal lubang-lubangi tapi kalau dibikin melengkung nah ini yang susah nah di sini shape bender membantu kita cukup siapkan pad lengkungannya lalu komponen itu pilih arah lurusnya dan pilih padnya ya sudah langsung melengkung ya aslinya boleh dihapus Iya, 
ini sangat enak sekali. Bisa dipakai juga buat jalan raya misalkan. Ya, buat bikin jalan raya yang melengkung. Nah, bisa juga ya. Jadi eh fungsinya akan banyak sekali yang bisa diterapkan. Contoh lagi membuat jendela di dinding yang melengkung. Ya. Kita tinggal ambil arah lurusnya dan klik. Iya. Oke, okay, ya ini uh, shape vendor. Ya. Baik. Pet copy kalau ini sederhana ya untuk mengcopy komponen sesuai petnya, kurpanya ya. Ini contoh mau diterapkan ke tangga putar misalkan baluster ini mau kita copy mengikuti pet. Nah, di situ Ya. ya, jadi eh, sangat membantu kita ini, ya, sangat membantu. Contoh lagi, jalan raya lagi nih, ya, kembali ke jalan raya lagi. Saya mau bikin pembatas jalan dan masang lampu di situ. Ya, cukup klik aja petnya dan komponennya langsung batas jalannya muncul di sana. Ya, itu tahan ditabrak motor. Nah, contoh lagi lampu. Ini mau saya deret kan, ya, petnya di sana. Nah, tinggal atur jaraknya nanti. Ya, oke. Ini contoh pet kopi. Ya, menarik. Komponen spray. E, kalau di browsing namanya kompo spray. Ya, ini kata dari komponen spray. Ya, semprotan komponen. Nah, jadi Komponennya nanti bisa disebar ya, supaya kita nggak copy satu-satu dan ini bisa dibikin teratur juga nanti. Nah ini contoh ada sebuah kontur tanah yang bergelombang, ya. juga ada beberapa komponen seperti pohon, batu-batuan. Mau saya spray, saya semprot ke permukaan, klik pilih komponennya apa. Yang mau dipakai, misalkan eh, pohon, lalu saya tambahkan komponen apa? Komponen batu, batu, batu-batuan, juga yang semak-semak tadi. Apakah berupa garis, apel berupa titik, atau berupa lingkaran? Kita bisa pilih, ya. Misalkan berupa eh, circle, lingkaran, kepadatannya berapa bisa kita atur, ya. Dan pengaturan lain banyak di situ. Kita tinggal kita klik spray aja semprot klik ya semprotkan ke permukaan yang banyak nyamuk klik iya sudah muncul semak semaknya di situ ya oke ya jadi nggak perlu ya, tadi kalau anda lihat ya mengikuti tanah ya mengikuti permukaan tanah jadi nggak ada yang nembus dan ini contoh kalau berupa line garis saya hanya pilih pohon aja di situ, spray, tinggal klik titik awal dan klik titik akhir, dia langsung berderet tanpa menembus tanah, dia langsung ikuti permukaan tanah juga, ya. Nah inilah uh, komponen spray, nanti bisa anda coba ya. Saya lupa berbayar atau gratis, tapi nanti anda bisa lihat deh, gitu. Ya, ya kalau ini ternyata berbayar masih ada cadangan. Uh, Lakin yang lain. Nah ini untuk yang berupa radius spray radius kliknya. Mudah-mudahan nanti dari komunitas kecap Indonesia bikinin lakinnya yang gratis. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Nah ini ya. ya. Terutama kalau bikin kawasan ya, kalau bikin kawasan atau mau bikin gambar orang rame-rame di situ ya bisa. Membuat gambar suasana. Nah, scale by tools. Ini menarik kali ini scale by tools. Nih. Untuk membuat model yang parametrik. Nih, yang lagi trend sekarang. Trending sekarang parametrik. Di software lain. Bikin parametrik itu rumit sekali. Ada bahasa pemrograman yang kadang. Di sini gampang. Nih klik. Beberapa komponen saya kumpulkan di situ. Ya. Pilih. Lalu klik. Yang pertama berdasar foto. Jadi. Saya mengambil foto JPG ini nanti. Skala berdasar biru, berdasar aksis biru. Oke, saya pilih logonya Aca Pasifik. Iya. 
open dan langsung membentuk logonya Aca Pacific SEA Pacific di situ. Nah, berdasar warna dia atur. Nah, contoh lagi. Ini misalkan uniform. Jadi bukan hanya tingginya tapi juga ukurannya mengecil juga. Sama pakai foto ini juga logo ini. Nah, ini ini juga sampai ukurannya ikut mengecil. Ya. Nah. Iya, gitu ya. Nah, eh contoh lagi saya menggunakan gambar yang gradasi, gradient seperti ini. Nah, kita bisa membentuk ini. Bayangkan di software lain ini butuh programming, ya. Nah, contoh fitur lain masih di scale by tools. Oh iya, e, fitur yang sama, tapi saya ganti dengan yang motion pergerakan atau rotation dah. Rotation dulu diputar, diputar berdasar aksis hijau berapa derajat, ya. Diputar berapa derajat? Oke, saya pilih logo Asia Pacific Open, ya. Asia Pacific bukan Aca Pacific. Nah, di situ diputar ya berdasar perbedaan warna. Contoh lagi nggak puas, nggak puas, penasaran. Ganti dengan yang gradient tadi. Ini ya, ya. Bayangin kalau di software lain. Ya. Pakai apalah program pemrograman apa? Pusing. Kapan jadinya itu gambar pusing mikirin programming ya. Nah, di sini ya Cukup pakai foto aja. Ngapain pusing? Iya, ini yang uh, motion. Iya, ya. Kan sekarang trennya begini, ya. Tren desainnya begini, yang parameter gini. Nah, atau bukan berupa komponen, tapi hanya berupa surface dan ada garis-garis vertex yang garis-garis saja, garis biasa. Bisa langsung di extrusion berdasar foto. Ya, gampang kan? Ya. Fotonya tinggal ngambil aja atau bikin di Photoshop. Ya, nggak puas nih nyoba lagi. Nah ini yang extrusion. Ya, ada lagi nggak? Ah masih belum puas juga. Coba pakai sandbox. Kita bikin. Iya. Jadi kalau anda membuat kontur tanah juga bisa dimainin pakai ini. Bikin gambar bukitnya ya pakai gambarin. Atau gambar dari maps, ya. oke, okay. masih nggak puas juga nih. Cobain lagi yang lain ini, ya, ya, nih, bentuk kontur tanah nanti udah lebih enak. Ternyata masih ada fitur lagi, yaitu attract, attraction, jadi pengaruh dari objek. Nah, itu jadi ada objek itu yang tadi tuh komponen lain langsung. Mengikuti objek itu, ya. Nih, misalkan saya copy lah objeknya di sini dan di sana. Ya, jadi ini untuk menjawab kebutuhan desain parametrik nih di sini. Ya, oke, seperti itu ya. Nah, kalau nggak percaya, coba aja browsing parametrik di software lain. Permitnya minta ampun ya, pakai Python lah, apalah. Nah, di sini cukup pakai foto. Ya, oke. Nah, itu tadi contoh-contoh extension. Kalau gitu, dari saya eh, sebagai pembawa presentasi, juga titipan dari Mr. Roger tadi mengucapkan terima kasih untuk Bapak Ibu dan teman-teman semua. Semoga bisa memanfaatkan sketchupnya untuk pekerjaan atau di perkuliahan. Semoga membantu. Kalau ada pertanyaan, yang belum sempat ditanyakan silahkan tanya lewat SI Pacific ya silahkan coba yang belum mencoba bisa buka webnya SI Pacific 